Hello and welcome to the 90th video in this series programming a chess engine in C. So last video then, you remember we created the polybook uh, .c and the polybook .h and also stored, uh, copied and pasted the polyglot book keys into the keys files. Well, this video we're going to actually start in this function here, the poly key from board, actually putting this in properly that we generate the actual proper hash key for, uh, in terms of a polyglot opening book. So the first thing I've done is inside the export.c, I've added in just a command here, poly key, which is just what we'll be using at the end of this video just to make sure that we're uh, printing out or we're generating the right key. You'll remember in the website with the polyglot format, uh, somewhere down here there's some test data here for us to quickly enter some positions in and see whether the um, key that's generated is actually correct. So without further ado then we can get on with how we'll generate the key. Now we can we actually generate the key in a very similar way to how we generated the key with the uh, for the for vice itself normally. We'll loop through all the pieces on the board and then depending on the square of pieces on we'll take the relevant key from the array etc etc. The only thing that we've got to watch out for is obviously that the piece integers, I'll just bring the website back here, are different to ours so we'll need some kind of conversion for this. We'll have to use this offset here to get our offset inside this large array of keys here and then we'll have to also use the correct offset for the cast link, the ampersand and the turn. And the ampersand is actually quite a tricky one or you can slip up here because as Mr. Buller has noted here, the FEN standard says when a pawn has moved forward two squares then it sets in the position string as if, for example E3 here, the ampersand square. Well technically if it isn't available for number song capture if there's no pawn actually a neck adjacent then to the pawn that's just moved and indeed polyglot only sets the ampersand square if there is also an adjacent pawn that's able then to capture on that square so that's a key bit of info there that's different to the way vice works so without further ado we can get on with it and the first thing we're going to do is make a hard-coded brutal array that simply converts these piece types into our so we get given the when we say we want we put our white pawn value in we get this white pawn value in polyglot terms back etc so I'll just start implementing that this video hopefully won't be too long but it's probably going to go around the 15 minutes or so or maybe even a bit longer okay so const int we want first of all and we'll just call it poly kind of piece and I'm going to type probably most of this video out even though it slows things down because I've had a couple of people say to me it's better even though it's slower when it's typed out so um, if you don't like this or it's too slow then then I apologize please tell me so we'll put a minus one and now we simply want the indexing from the website which I've, you can't see on the screen but I'm reading on the right hand side so we've got the moment you remember from our defs.h in vice the definitions for the enumerated constants we had for our pieces the first piece was a white pawn which also in polyglot is a one then we have a black pawn which sorry not a black pawn we have a white knight which um, in polyglot is a three so we'll put a three here and then we have the bishop which is a five and there's a pattern in polyglot already which you can see which simply runs like this and then the black pawn in polyglot is a zero then we have a two and a four and a six and an eight and a ten like so so that means now when we give our piece say a white bishop we'll then get returned to the relevant piece number for in polyglot's internal format for a white bishop so that's the first part there done and fairly easy the next thing to do is go inside the poly key from board and we need to make some definitions as usual so we'll have square and we need rank and we need file and then we also need our final key and we'll set that to naught for now and we also need a piece which we'll set to empty and we'll have poly piece it's uh, P -O -L, it's oops sorry poly piece gosh I, my goodness it must be far too early I'll set to naught for now and we'll have int and offset because we'll be using that for our array reference 
Okay, so the first thing to do then is to loop through the actual board. I'm just going to make a load of space down here before I do any more of that so that we can read things a little bit easier. Uh, so we need to do a classic for loop. So square equals naught, square is less than board, square and num and plus plus square. So we'll loop through all of our board squares, including the borders. It doesn't really matter here. It's hardly a performance intensive thing. We can take our piece first of all from our board, which should be our board pieces and square. And now we want to do what we've done before. This is repeating actually the code from the uh, generate hash key function. So we've got the pieces uh, not equal to no square and the piece is not equal to empty and the piece is not equal to off board so we've got enough protection in there that is definitely a piece on the board then we'll put an assert in here as we also did in the generate hash key so we'll assert that our piece is greater than or equal to a white pawn and also that our piece is less than or equal to a black king otherwise if it's not like that then it means that we have some trouble and my behavior with spaces is not very good uh, and now what we want to do then is now get our poly piece so we get our poly piece simply using the array that we've done at the top here so poly kind of piece and this is then indexed obviously by our piece so once we've got that, we then need to think about how is the index actually done inside the array to get the correct key from this large array. Well, it's written here that we have to do 64 times the kind of piece which we've got plus 8 times the row plus the file or rank and file. And the ranks and files are indexed exactly the same as in Vice. So we'll take the uh, rank then. So we'll just say that rank equals and ranks board for the square and we'll say that file equals files board whoops also for the square and now we're in the position where we can actually um, get our key out and exclusive all this with our final key so we take the carrot then so the exclusive or and then we want to take our, you remember we made our random 64 poly array in the last video. And now in here we simply need to do what was inside the format on the web page. So we say we do our 64 multiplied by our poly piece. And then plus 8 times the rank. And then plus the file. And that does all of our pieces uh, for the squares that they're sitting on. So that's the first part done. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the castling. I'm just going to make some more space. And luckily the castling is very similar also to how we've done it in Vice. So what we need to do in Vice is he says here that white castling short is naught, one, two, and three. These are actually offsets, they're not the values, it's bit, the first, second, third, and fourth bit. So these are the offset that we will have starting at an offset of seven, six, eight. So if the castling permission, if white can castle short in this position, then we will exclusive all with the key at seven, six, eight. And if black can castle short, then we'll XOR with a key at 770, and so on. So I'll just go back into the code here, and I hope I'm not going to cough. So we'll say now the offset equals 768. And now a little bit boring, but if uh, board and then castle perm. If that is non-zero with a bitwise and for white king castle, then we know that we can say that our final key, and I've just realized I've made a very bad spelling mistake here, final key can be exclusive ord with our random 64 poly, and that is at an index of our offset plus zero in the case of the 
White King Castle Link. And then I'm just going to copy this now in here. So we've got White Queen Side Castle Link. Then we've got Black King Side Castle Link. And Black Queen Side Castle Link. And we've got the offsets of 1, 2, and 3, like so. So that's the Castle Link then sorted for our key. The next one is the on passant. Can't remember whether it's an A or an E. It's an A, isn't it? Okay, on passant. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set our offset, and our offset is now 772, if I remember correctly from here. So 772. And this is indexed, it, Mr. Muller explains below here, by the file that the on passant square is on. So not by the square itself, but just by the file that the square is on. But what we need to know, as I explained, is not whether we have a, only whether we have an on passant square, but we actually need to know whether we have a pawn adjacent to the pawn that's just more moved forward two squares to then make this capture. So we actually need to write another function to do this, unfortunately. And we're going to put this function above the poly key from board. We'll return an int, which will be our true or false, and we'll call it has pawn for capture and it's not very complicated we'll take in our board structure and now what we'll do is then we'll say int square with pawn equals zero and we also need to know what uh, target piece we're looking for. This will be explanatory in a minute why I'm, I'm doing it like this but I want to get through this as quickly as possible because it's really not very tough but if the current side to move is white, it means black has just made an on passant capture. Excuse me, I'm going to have to mute the mic and cough. Sorry about that, back from coughing. Uh, that's better, a lot better. Right, so if the side to move is white, then the target piece we're looking for is a white pawn, because it means black has just moved uh, his black pawn forward two squares, so we're looking to see if there's a white pawn either side of that pawn, otherwise the target piece is a black pawn. And then, now what we need to do, obviously, is say if the board and the on passant square of the board is not equal to no square, so we actually have one set, if we don't have one set then there's, we'll return a false anyway. And now we'll say that if the side is equal to white, then will say that the square with the pawn on it, so the black pawn on it, will be at board on passant and then minus 10. Because the on passant square, remember, is set to one square behind the pawn that's just moved. Well, we want to know whether we're next to that pawn, so first of all we need to know where the square is with the pawn. Else, we just set square with pawn to board on pass plus 10. I could have done that probably on a question mark and colon line, but never mind. Okay, like so. And once we've got that, we can then ask whether our target piece is on a square to either side of this. So I imagine that's fairly obvious what we're going to do now, but we're simply going to say if board pieces, and then we'll say at the square with the pawn, plus one. So going to one side, remember we've got the guarding squares around our um, 64 squares on the board, so we don't need to worry about going wrapping around the board or anything. So if our target piece um, is on the in the plus one direction from the square with the pawn, then we can return our true. It means we do have something there. Otherwise we can say else if, and I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here and switch the plus one for a minus one, we can return true like this. Otherwise if none of this applies, then we just return false. Okay, so going back down then into the en passant area here then, so what we can say now is that if, and now we can say has pawn for capture, and I'm wondering now how many spelling mistakes I've made so far, because I haven't compiled yet, equals true. Then we'll take the file from our board on percent square, and I've realized I've made there a mistake. 
I'm hoping I haven't made too many horrible mistakes, otherwise the compiling process is going to take a bit too long and you might get a bit irritated. And then we simply need to uh, exclusive or our key now with our random 64 poly and our index is our offset plus the file. Fairly easy stuff. And then last but not least is simply the side and the offset looking off screen here at the website um, for the side is at 780 and according to the instructions we only apply this if it's white to move. So what we'll do is we'll say if and then board side equals white then we'll take the key and I'll just copy this here just to make things a little bit quicker and the offset was 780 and there's no file obviously we need to put inside there. So all being well that should compile so I'm just going to off screen see just how many spelling mistakes I've made where is make can't find it okay don't seem to have made any spelling mistakes good so now what I can do is, is bring the terminal over and now we can have a quick look then at if I run vice and I'm going to have to cough again excuse me right so if I run vice and we're going to export mode I'm going to type new and then force so I can force the um, program not to do any moves and now uh, Mr. Muller has provided a set of positions with the relevant key here so what I'm going to do is just take these FEM positions and see if we're generating anything like the correct poly key so what I want to do here is say set board and like so and now let's type poly key and you can see here that we've got 463B9618 blah 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 and if I just bring over the website here you can see that we have exactly the same key generated here so that looks okay there let's take a trickier position that he's got where there's actually an on percent square because that's where things can go wrong so I'll just take copy there and now I'll just go set board and paste this in again and now type poly key and you'll see also for this one with the upper sun square we've generated exactly the same key I'm just going to try one more position because he's put uh, another tricky position in here again with an on percent square just to make sure that those things are being generated correctly to test that in fact we'll do two more because there's also a castling permission test so I've got set board here this I just type poly key and this time we have the 3c8 blah 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 and you'll see that the key also is the same here our last position I'm going to take is this one here because the kings have moved you'll see well one of the kings has moved so you'll see that the castling permission has changed here so I'll just take this FEN as well and copy that and type poly key and you can see that we've also generated exactly the same key here so we can be fairly satisfied that we're able using our function here with the poly key from board to actually generate the correct hash key in terms of the polyglot format. So that's it, in the, it then for this video. The next video we'll carry on writing our functions to actually get our book moves from Polyglot Book. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.